Trump is a lot like John Gotti. He has a cult of personality. He has fans that are cheering for him. In the end, Gotti and Trump are both mob bosses. And the way their business functions is they get a cut of the action up top. And so it should be no surprise whatsoever that the astounding grift that is the Trump political operation would attach a new vig for every MAGA Republican candidate out across the country who dares to use the Donald's name. Hey, Trump. Hey, Trump. Hey, Trump. It's gangsterism. It is the 18th of April. There are 201 days remaining until the American people will decide who between Joe Biden and Donald Trump will be the most powerful person in the world, the American commander in chief. This is the morning. Donald Trump has been America's dominant cultural figure for almost 10 years. It's been nine years since he descended the escalator into the bowels of Trump Tower, proclaiming that Mexicans are all rapists and murderers. Is the country better off today than it was before Trump's escalator descent? The answer is obviously no. But Donald Trump has managed over the last decade to build an enduring cult of personality that will persist so long as there is any question about his defeat, repudiation, and rejection at the hands of the American people. The power of his lie is grounded in his refusal to ever make a concession to fact, to reality, or to what is plainly in front of him. For most Americans, Donald Trump got super famous during The Apprentice. That's how the American people got to know the Donald. I'm not one of those people because I grew up in the state of New Jersey. And if you grew up in a small geography that includes parts of Southern Connecticut, Queens, Long Island, Staten Island, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, northern New Jersey, Donald Trump has been famous, super famous, since at least the mid-1970s. I wouldn't bet a lot of money, but I'm pretty sure I got the Art of the Deal board game in 1982. I was 11. If you are from that part of the country, then you are familiar with a certain type of, well, let's call them an asshole, that Trump perfectly represents. In dealing with this type of, let's call that asshole a Trump, is an important skill if you live in that part of the country to simply be able to survive and navigate life. Going to the store, going to the gas station, it is an aggressive culture. But for anybody who was alive in that geography, the most densely populated in the United States, it remains and will always remain the most astounding feature of our age that Donald Trump could conceivably ever be elected president of the United States. And furthermore, that the foundation of his election would be the con that he's a successful billionaire businessman. Now, personally, I don't have a Harvard MBA, but I can tell you this. It is incredibly difficult to go bankrupt running a casino, but Donald Trump has managed to do it multiple times. While doing it, he ripped off every small business guy and woman that you could shake a stick at, all of them. There is no little guy contractor that Donald Trump didn't screw, didn't rip off. This is a man, Trump, who ran a fake and fraudulent university. 
Think about that. He ran a fake and fraudulent university. Now, in order to truly understand Donald Trump, one must have an appreciation from another resident of the Queens, New York. This one from Ozone Park. His name was John Gotti, the Teflon Don. John Gotti was a thug, a scumbag, and a murderer of the highest conceivable degree. But over and over again, he got off. And when he did, there would be firework celebrations in Ozone Park. Trump is a lot like John Gotti. He has a cult of personality. He has fans that are cheering for him. There has always been a strain of Americanism that is grounded in the philosophy of fuck youism. And Trump is one of history's great philosophers of fuck youism. When John Gotti was acquitted, it was an F you. When Trump sticks his middle finger up to the Constitution, to the Congress, to anybody, it delights people. But in the end, Gotti and Trump are both mob bosses. And the way their business functions is they get a cut of the action up top. And so it should be no surprise whatsoever that the astounding grift that is the Trump political operation would attach a new vig for every MAGA Republican candidate out across the country who dares to use the Donald's name. The campaign wants a minimum of 5%, but will look favorably at the highest levels, perhaps even at the capo ranks, all the way up to the capo, to Tutti Capo himself, the boss of bosses, Donald Trump. If you raise money for a mayor's race, a congressional race, and Senate race, and you use the name, the Donald, well then, of course, 10%, 20%, 30% of all the money you raise should go to, well, you guessed it, Donald Trump's campaign to his legal defense funds to pay the lawyers. Now, personally, I'm all for this. I believe fools and their money should be separated. And I definitely look at any candidate who uses Trump's name, from my perspective, should be fined. And so the only deficiency in this plan is that the fine goes to Trump. The good news with that is it will soon be wasted. But putting that aside, the political situation for Trump is dire because he's on track to be outspent by $350 million in the general election. Now, again, understand the rules. If you're a candidate and you say Trump's name, he wants 5%. He won't be happy with that. That's the minimum expectation. If you want to please him, pleasure him, titillate the census, number has to be higher. 10%, 15%, maybe 50%. Who knows? But this is important to understand because when you look at Donald Trump's plans for the government, this is how oligarchy functions. This is how the corruption will work. You want a contract? Pay the bribe. You want to get something done? Pay Trump. You want to make an invention, get approval at the government, pay Trump, pay Trump, pay Trump. It's gangsterism. It's how Russia functions. To a degree, it's how China functions. And it's how Donald Trump wants to make America function. Because he has a fantasy that America functions like the corrupt real estate world he dealt with in Manhattan, where he can oil the system, where he can grease it with a little cash in an envelope. Donald Trump is a grifter who is more fantastically corrupt 
than the accumulated corruptions of all of America's previous presidents put together, times 10 to the exponent of a million, which is to say a lot more. This is a harbinger of things to come, of the degeneracy that will flow from Donald Trump atop the American government. He will turn it into a giant pay for play system. The United States government will become an open till, a cash register, with every Trump's greedy little pause in it all the time. Jared Kushner, $2 billion in Saudi money, six months after walking out of the Oval Office, having access to the president's daily brief. $2 billion. The corruption is fantastical, and the danger it represents to the American people even more so. The campaign story isn't that big a deal because it's so predictable. But even though it's predictable, it's still shocking. It's shocking not because it's unexpected, but because for nine long years, a great nation of 330 million people have allowed this to happen, have allowed this degeneracy to fester, to grow, and this degenerate to dominate our society. Isn't it time to bring this wretched show to an end? Thank you for listening to my political commentary. If you like what you heard today, please also consider subscribing to The Warning, daily newsletter on Substack.